carving of this carp on, um, on the lovely piece of walnut that he's got. That's all we've got to do it completely. It wasn't quite enough into one block that way so I'm going to do it the other way. It's a bit of a knot, it'd be a perfect place out there. Very decorative, that means all this lovely patterning across the back as well. So I've tilted the fish that way and I've added the tail onto the end so what I'm going to do next is to cut that out and glue it on. I'm going to start to shape it up. This is the design I'm working on. But that's the knot is that side of the fish, so in fact the um, scaling is going to be the other way around on the fish, but I don't think it will really matter, as it's going to suit the, 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 the actual grain much better, and the grain isn't the same the other side. So we've got the uh, grain, lovely figuring up the back there, and we've got the grain for the eye from that knot. And we'll add the tail on that way and get the maximum out of our wood here, the fins in and the tail onto there. Okay, let's take a look at the tools that we're going to need for doing this job. So I've already finished the basics of it, but we need a mallet, a riffler, a wood, you might call it a small wood rasp. You see the shape of that has a curve as well as a straight edge, the saw edge at the edges as well, so it's a very handy tool. Then various carving gouges, a V gouge here, and almost flat and then gradually into the gouges. This very little useful rasping tool that go into an electric drill for shaping up the patterns. My carving mallets, I've got three of them, that's my heaviest one. Some surforms for shaping up as well. A planer, a jigsaw, I've got a very large jigsaw as well for, for cutting up larger pieces, as well as a chainsaw I needed on this, and of course the electric drill. Now those are your basics. And of course we need a vise, and a couple of G clamps. I right, know we've got to cut the tail section out, so let's do that with a jigsaw, take a bit of time because it's such hard wood. So there we are, that's the tail ready cut, now we've got to make the joints for that. Um, we're going to peg and glue that onto the main shape, well, the main shape out. But what I'm wanting uh, is a piece of wood to go onto here, because I want this fin to come out slightly from the fish to be alright. So I need to cut a small waste piece off that piece of plank I was just cut, just to glue onto there. Right, that shape will do it there then. Take that out and that will go onto that piece there. And that gives us our fin. We take him down so that it's at a slight angle and thicker at one than the other. So we'll do that with the planer. Now 
we are. So you can see now that that has gone down into a nice wedge shape. And that should then fit nicely onto there. And now you want a man sized jigsaw, so we'll use this big old thing here, which will really, I hope, chomp down through this hardwood. to fit the tail and we've got the basic shape done. I've got the uh, fin to put on and the tail to put on. And I'm going to put the tail slightly offset this way and plane down one edge so that the tail curves around this way. So we can get a nice gentle curve into it. So I'm going to just plane off this edge here. of this down. All the same. With a little bit of adjustment that should allow the tail to fit onto there. Let's see how much adjustment we need. There we go, perfect. Just better gluing it all up now and then waiting. Time to glue up. Got a sash clamp and a G clamp ready to G clamp the fin on and to sash clamp the tail on. Get plenty of glue at first. We want to make sure that our dowel rods have lots of glue on. Doesn't matter how much because it will tickles down a bit. Want plenty there to glue in between. And then the joint itself of course. Plenty on. Always wipe it off later. And Put the sash clamp over onto its nose. And all I should have to do is tighten up. That's good. Right. Now it's just the fin into place. There's our basic fish shape glued up, ready for actually starting to cut down to the fins next uh, and start to form the body. <coughs> well, as you see here, it's now glued up really well. Hard to see a joint there or here. And the next stage is to start cutting away the waste wood off the fins and tail and so on. basic roughing up of the fish done. Now it's uh, going to be rounding off and uh, a little bit of tidying up before we actually start the real shaping. We've taken the waste wood off the top fin now. It's a shame to waste such beautiful wood so with some of the um, waste wood that was left over I've made a little optional base to go on it so this will just slot into the bottom of the fish 
and it should just balance when I do it. Well, they can take it off and have the fish standing on its fins, or they can use the base. Okay, now we're onto the actual shaping of the fish I'm using what's called a surform, like a cheese grater for wood. All this shaping up needs doing before we even get to the actual carving. back to it again and now it's just a matter of shaping up and rounding off all these forms, smoothing them down, either using the surform or the carving. And that's why we have these different shaped surforms so we can get in there and get right out of it. it needs smoothing around and shaping. Sometimes that means a rasp and sometimes it means getting back in there with the chisels again. never split against the grain, always go along and down with the grain, cross it. In this case the grain goes this way so I'm going downwards and when I was going that way the grain was going the other way. Make a nice smooth cut and it doesn't split off. I mean, sometimes you want it to split off, like I do here now. I just split straight off in that direction safely. Basic shape it. That's better. And then we can cut downwards and across and we're slicing with the chisel. What do I mean by that about going with the grain? Well, if we look at this piece of wood here, you can see that the grain is going that way here and that way there with that piece of wood. If I cut that way, I'd be safe because it's going down across the grain. If I cut this way, it would split downwards. So that wouldn't work. Here's it's straight grain a little bit curved. Where it curves upwards I need to carve that way there and when it comes up with this way I need to carve that way there or it will split off. So if I cut that way there it would split downwards. But if I cut this way I'd be cutting along and across it. Here we can see the grain coming across this way. Look, it comes down there and up here. If I hit here the grain would split off just there. If I hit here it would split upwards. So if I'm trying to cut across this I'd need to cut that way here so that it went not down with the grain but upwards. I'd be okay cutting across there. I hope that gives you an idea. Here you can see the grain again at the end. It goes upwards here. There's a knot there, so the knot would be very hard to cut. But if I was cutting into here, I'd be alright going that way, but I wouldn't be alright going that way. Something else you may have noticed is that I'm not using a mallet like this, a square mallet. I'm using a round mallet. And I've got different weights and sizes of these. And this is because 
when I'm hitting with a round mallet onto a chisel, I've got far more control with the rounder mallet than I have with the square, in fact. I can hit at a slight angle, or the tip of it, I can just tap. It's a much more uh, controllable instrument than the square mallet for carving. This one is in fact made out of lignum vitae, which is a very heavy wood, very hard wood. Well, you can see we've got the uh, shape of the fins and everything in the belly in now. We've rounded all that up, and that's ready for detail work. I just want to work down around the sides and the top yet. Nice curve on the tail as well, which I've got now going around here, and I've got to take out of the inside a bit now. You can see how the shape has taken up. We've got a bit of finishing to do around these sort of edges, and gently coming in here, and I want to take a section out of there to curve it inwards. So I've gently brought this in to curve into the tail. Working up with a fan shape here, nice fan shape. And then try and smooth it out. And get in there with a sort of form. You can see now we've got a lovely curve going there. And I can blend the whole thing in and smooth it in gently. There we are. Another tool I find very useful are these little rasps carving rasps. You can see I can get into almost any corner with these. And I'm going to need these in and around things like the fins here to get in there and remove all that rough waste wood. There's our basic shape carved. That's the side we're going to be using most of. So now it's a matter of uh, more detail and finishing up. I've got to work on the head now and the fins. I don't think it's time to start working on the head now. Okay, we're going to start working on the head. The first thing it needed doing was this fin needed making smaller for the scale of the fish. You see here that fin is not much larger than that one, in fact. I've got to just reshape these a bit. This fin also needs bringing down a bit. Just there. I've got to take that bit up. Bring down below. There we are, that's a better shape. And here I've got to draw a gill. And the gill cover is coming just in front here of the pectoral fin. And the eye isn't that large because the size of the carp is, you know, we've got to make the eye smaller for a larger carp, obviously, because the eyes are proportionate. And to do that, I'm going to use my B gouge which is this one, and just work in a circle around the eye first of all. And this is where it gets a bit rough, so I want to be careful I don't chisel the eye out here. And some of that I can do with my little riffler as well. Called a riffle of this, not a file, but it is a file as well, of course. There we go. Just need to tidy this up. Fiddly jobs, but very important ones. Maybe you go and just go around there again and just tidy things up a bit by hand. Not with a mallet this time. Right, now you want to do the gill, and that's going to come right round from under here. The same V2 again to get this nice deep carved line into it. And right, that's given me that gouge down to there. Now I've got to go in with the the ordinary gouges and just level into it. I 
And once that bit's done, I get in there with the riffler again. Apart from doing up the wood and everything else, all the basic shaping, and then all of these details to customise it down to the actual fish. And if you're just doing a, a generic carp, in which case it doesn't matter so much. I want it to come round under here. Not made easier by the fact that I've got a lot of arthritis going on in my hands now, and I don't know how many more of these I'm going to be able to build. I'm doing what I can while I can. Just get in there and smooth it down, I reckon. I quite like the carp with their mouths openings up as if they're going to feed. So that's what I was going to do with this one. Now it needs a bit more around the nose taken down. This area here has to be taken out. And so I was saying there's a bit around the shoulders here. So let's see what we can do with that. It's just a, a wee bit for the nostrils carving out each side here. There we go. Just tidying around there a little bit. And now we're on the shoulders, we've done this piece here. Like this piece of the shoulder that comes around. In there with the bigger one to come down and just there we are, that's not looking too bad. So that side of the face is done. I'm going to turn and do the other side, the same, and then we do the mouth. What else I'm going to do at this stage, before I get any finer in work, is drill the hole in that I want to use for the uh, base. It's up to them whether they use that base or not. And, uh, this piece will now fit on there quite nicely. Yeah. There we go, it'll come off there easily enough. And it's up to you then whether they use that stand or not, isn't it? They can have it at any angle they want then. Quite fun. Right, let's carry on with the fish then. Over we'll onto the second side of the head. Be gouge again. We're going to carve in the gill again. This side is the side facing away, so I haven't built the fin up here or built this up as much. It's really as a background, just uh, just to give it some sort of finish. Now I want to work on the on the mouth. Just want to make that a little bit shorter there because it's uh, just a little bit narrow, I think, for the mouth. And it's fairly long in the nose as well, so we can afford to lose a little bit off that. And if I can cut in around here first just to get that top lip and of course we've got the barbel to put on yet as well we've got to now. So a lot of the basic stuff is done but the next trick is to start doing the rays and the fins. 
it's time to start the uh, fins. Get these veins on the fins. That works out quite well. And one rather nice tool I found for doing this is this drill bit. Same sort of bark on the tail. Start off with a central one. as well. Right, I'm going to change over the drill bits now from this rounder one to a more pointed one for the slightly finer veins on these fins. The effect we can get is rather fun. Shaping. We've got a bit more of the belly coming in here, a bit more form there, I think we need to take a bit off here. And then we've got to personalise it with these scales. So first of all I need to get my surf form and just take off this lump here. Right, that gives it a nicer shape. Now, uh, let's look at the scales that are on this carp that we want to mimic. One here, this one here, and mark these out. Here. I should come back and just level out the rear edges of them with the file again to level them in to let those scales just stand out a little bit like that. Right, it's just a matter of doing the same with one of these, which I've got all the marks on now. Now, we've done the tail on the top fin to the narrower one. off this far side and when we're down to sanding that's all the details have basically been done. Now last but by no means least we've got to sand the whole thing down and get everything as smooth as possible before we try the finishes. As you can see that's almost ready for a, for a preliminary coat of sealant now. Um, I just need to put the barbels in too. I've got to make those yet. A bit more sanding, of course. Right, to make the barbels, we need to find the right part of the mouth, and I'm going to use some quarter inch dowel rod. So, in other words, this stuff. And the barbels come out just at the end of the mouth here, at the lower edge there. So, that's where I've got to put them into. I've got to drill two holes, one each side, and 
then cut those to length and glue them in. They don't want to be too long, I guess. This sort of length would be nice. So I've got to have that plus whatever's going to go inside. So I'm guessing it's about that. So I want to make two of those lengths. I've got my drill bit. Just go into the slight angle here. exactly the same with the side, so now I've got that marked up if I'm careful. This is the problem, making sure it goes in the right and same place. A useful tool for doing little bits of dowel rod like this is the sharpener, and it works so well on jobs like this. Got the right length, The filler. We don't want to put them in yet though because I want to finish sanding. Oh. Well here's our cart now, sanded and ready for the um, sealant. Could just turn it around on that pedestal, balance whatever. So it could be that way around if you wanted. Next would be to give it that coat of sealant and I shall use some varnish, thin down with some terps and polish it after that. So we first start to really see the fish because uh, when the varnish and the sealant goes on, I'm using a thin down acrylic here, um, the colour of the wood comes out, the grain of the wood comes out and uh, it looks a lot more attractive. And also I mean giving it a second sanding because it will also bring out the grain as well and that's going to mean I need to come back into here and sand all these areas down that are rough when it's dry. You see the beauty of the wood grain comes out now, darkens it all down. And the other side. And that's brought the green out beautifully. So it's just a matter of now sanding it all up and then we've got to add the polish and buff it and do that several times over to try and get a nice lustre rather than too much gloss. Now it's had a coat of sealant, a thin down varnish, sanded down again and another coat of polish on top of that and you're just rubbing down one more coat of polish and fingers crossed we'll start to get a lovely lustre on there. Mm -hmm. 